do I solve this part of the question? What will Master Galileo say? He doesn't know how to square root. Galileo, I am sorry. I am not worthy to be your pupil. I am a failure. <laughs> I came from the future! <laughs> Tell me, fellow human, what year is this? It's just horrible! <laughs> what, who, me? I can't solve this part of the question! There is no way! There is just no way I can solve this! <laughs> oh, I never fear, fellow human, for this is what you need! Texas Instrument Calculator, the best calculator ever. Visit ti.com for more information. Hello and welcome to the best YouTube channel featuring me, your favorite online celebrity. Last week, I built a time machine. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> and I have successfully traveled back in time to the 17th century where I met Vincenzo Viviani, who was Galileo Galilei's disciple. Vincenzo Viviani will help me solve a physics question related to object motion and kinematics. And here he is, the man himself. Buongiorno a tutti! It's strange, why are we staring at this device? I will never understand future people. Sorry. Okay, let's go to the whiteboard. And so here we are, the filming booth. The whiteboard, we're gonna be watching Vincenzo Viviani teach us physics. I already wrote the question on the board, he's coming right now. I'm just gonna sit here, watch him solve the question for us. And yeah, we're gonna watch this man from the past solve a physics question. He's coming right now. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, here we are, here we are. Wow, people in the future, they're so rich. Yeah. Where do I stand? Stand over there. Here? Oh, okay. And then look up at the, the, the camera. Right. And, and uh, don't forget to introduce yourself, yeah. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Vincenzo Viviani. I am from Italy. And today I am helping my future friend, my friend from the future, to solve a physics question. So, the question is, Ed, drops two balls of different weights from the same height of 20 feet, which is about 6 meters in... yes. Using your knowledge of Galileo's theory that proves that the rate of, at which objects fall towards the ground is independent of their mass, find the time it takes both balls, whose masses are different, to touch the ground. This is so nostalgic. Actually, my master, Galileo, already tried this experiment from the Tower of Pisa. He dropped two objects of different weights and they fell at the same time. They reached the ground at the same time. This is so nostalgic. Okay, so the question wants us to find the time that it takes for both balls to reach the ground. So first, let us visualize this question. Ed is standing on top of a platform so that is 20 meters from the ground. 20, 20 feet, I'm sorry, 20 feet from the ground, which is 6 meters. For the sake of this question, I'm not going to use 20 feet, I'm going to use 6 meters. Because that's the metric system that you guys are using? Yes, yes, the metric system. Yes, yes. Okay, and so he drops two balls of different weights down this platform. The weight of the object doesn't matter, so we, we don't need to calculate individual times for the two balls. We, know, we, we just calculate one, one time for both balls, okay? The 20 feet, the 6 meters, that is the displacement. But it is negative 6 meters because the end position is lower than the big starting position. Down is negative, up is positive. That's the convention. And so since the balls, they end up lower than their initial position, the displacement is negative the change in position is negative 6 meters. What else do we know? We know that the two balls were dropped. Dropped. It means that the initial velocity is zero. He did not throw them down the 6 meters. He dropped them. 
So velocity, initial velocity, is equal to zero meters per second. That is another given that is hidden in the language. We need to use words of the language as clues for information. Now, anybody studying physics must know that any object that is falling towards the center of the Earth is accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared because that is a downward force, downward acceleration, so it's negative. And we are trying to find time, or change in time. Well, we don't know what it is, we want to find it. Now, what is the best equation to use? We have change in position, we have initial velocity, acceleration, and time. The best equation is change in position is equal to veloc initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. Now all we have to do is plug in the numbers. Negative 6 meters for the displacement is equal to 0 times change in time. 0 times anything is 0. This part is gone. And we're only left with 1 half times negative 9.8 times delta t squared. Now it's just a question of math. We rearrange the equation to find that delta t is equal to the square root of negative 6 divided by negative 4.9. And we use this ingenious and incredible device to find that the square root of negative 6 divided by negative 4.9 is equal to 1.11 approximately seconds this is the answer to the problem to the question all this thanks to this magnificent ingenious and useful essential tool I cannot believe that such an incredible device could be invented this is the most important discovery invention of humanity. Without this, math would have been a ton more complicated. And so you must trust the calculator and always use it. This is your best friend. This is my best friend. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to stop Vincenzo Viviani because if I were to let him talk, he would go on for hours just describing how good, how wonderful the calculator is. And um, right now I am preparing to send him back into the past 1672 where he belongs. I can't keep him in the future forever. And like all good things, this just has to end. It's pretty hard for me as well. And yeah, we're preparing to say goodbye. And I am back home. Thank you for bringing me to the future, my friend. Farewell. Farewell. Farewell, Mr. Viviani. Ciao. Bye. Wait. You forgot this? Whew. Time traveling is tiresome. <sighs> Let's see what's on the news. Probably just inflation. Increased inflation is not the only concern on people's minds these days. Archaeologists in Italy have found a calculator hidden deep within the personal documents of Vincenzo Viviano, who was Galileo Galilei's apprentice and disciple. We do not know what this means, but folks, this is exciting.